Hey guys, it's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides, and I'm here to continue our little discussion. This is part two of New Car Buying 101. Now, if you have not seen my first video about this topic, you definitely want to go down in that playlist of my vlogs and click on that. In the first video, I talk about what are the things that you should be doing before you head to the dealership on your day to buy your new car. And like I said earlier, uh, I am no expert by any means. I am just trying to share some of the experience of the experiences that I've had, the research that I've done, the knowledge that I've gained from going through this whole process, process many times. Um, and I want you to be able to get a really good deal so that when you leave the dealership, it's not only about getting a great deal, but also feeling good about the whole experience. Um, like I said before, buying a new car, it's never an investment. The car is gonna depreciate, especially when you drive it off the lot. But let's see what we can do to negate that. So it's the big day that you've decided you're gonna go down to um, the dealership and purchase that new car. One of the things you definitely wanna do before you get to the dealer is you need to get your mind straight that you're gonna be there a while. Buying a new car is one of those things, it's not like going to Best Buy and, and buying a big screen TV and you know, you're done with the whole process within 30 minutes, an hour or so. There have been some times in the past where I haven't been at the dealership a very, very long time, especially depending on how that whole negotiation process is going. So if you have not had something to eat before you go to the dealership, I highly recommend having the breakfast or lunch depending on what time of the day that you're going before you go. If you're starting early enough, have your breakfast, start your day off right, then head down to the dealership. What I would do is, is bring some snacks with you, something that you that's easily um, transportable. Um, that way, you will keep your mind clear, and if your blood sugar drops or you start to get hungry, you can have that snack to keep your mind in the game. Because sometimes what can happen is this process could take so long that you start to not think very clearly and you just want to get out of there. Like you want to get the whole process done and get out of there. Another thing I want to remind you before you go to the dealer, you are in charge of this whole process. So at any time you feel that you're unhappy with the situation, you don't like how you're being treated, um, you think that you know, you're not getting anywhere or you're just done, you're like ready to tap out, you are in charge, get up, thank them for their time. You, you know, you don't have to be rude or whatnot, thank them for their time and always go come back another day. You know, this isn't one of those things that just because you started, you have to finish it. That's another thing I like to remind people um, because I think they, you know, they're like that whole process has started. I don't want to start this all up again. Listen, it's worth it. If you need that extra time, new cars, they're, they're expensive. We're not buying them all the time. It's good to go back and, and, and get another, another day, another shot at it. So once you got all that, you have all your papers collected, remember you were supposed to research your vehicle, you were supposed to research your trade-in because this whole scenario is based off of you having a car to trade in. I hope you researched the dealer and I really, really hope that you went and accessed one of those um, auto finance calculators online and printed up some scenarios. If you got the car for this price and you got it at this interest rate, here's what your car payment is. That way you don't have to discuss any of that car payment stuff with your salesperson. The deal should be strictly about the end of the day, the bottom line, how much is that car out the door. So you show up to the dealership. Step two here, the meet and greet. Obviously, um, I'm hoping that if you did the research part of it, you already have a salesperson that maybe somebody recommended to you or maybe somebody that you spoke to on the phone. If you got a good vibe, Use them again while you're there. If you didn't get a good vibe, use somebody new. You're in charge of this whole process. When you meet that person for the first time, you know, see if they're asking you the questions. I find that there's a lot of salespeople out there, they're not asking us the right questions of things that we want. Thankfully, they are out there. I have worked with a few, especially recently within the, the last couple of cars that I bought brand new. But it, it, it seems that as time goes by, uh, they're harder and harder to come by. They should be asking you the right questions. Hopefully they're knowledgeable. I'll be honest with you. 
uh, even though I'm not an uh, expert by any means, because I really like to do the research part of the whole deal, and because you know I'm a teacher by day, I really believe in doing your homework. Um, hopefully you've done your homework. I wind up usually knowing more than the salesperson, unless they are an enthusiast type of salesperson. Because if, if you're watching this, you know I'm into enthusiast types of cars. They're very specific. They're very uh, like a niche type thing that um, a lot of times the salespeople don't know much. I'm actually educating them more uh, about the car than them educating me. Which to be honest with you, you should know more, more about it um, because you should have done your homework. Now it's time for the test drive. Like I told you in the last video, I'm hoping that you're going in at the end of the month. The dealerships need to make their quotas. Salespeople need to meet their quotas. Everybody is more motivated at the end of the month than at the beginning of the month. And if there's a way that you're happy with an outgoing year or model, and because they have the new ones sitting there, like if there was a 2017 right now uh, on a lot, and obviously today's 2018, um, maybe you could get that really awesome deal in the 2017. Now when you go out for that test drive, you really gotta calm the excitement. Use your logical mind. You know, you have this frontal portion of your brain is called the frontal lobe. That's where all your judgment, your logic, all of that is taking place. Make sure you're using this and not a little tiny lima bean part of your brain called the amygdala. The amygdala is emotion. Whenever we make decisions based off of emotion, usually it's the wrong ones. So keep that frontal lobe open and clear. Look at it from a very objective perspective. When you go to test drive the vehicle, make sure things are working. Test everything out and not just the radio. Uh, really go through it see if the car is making any noises. You know, a lot of times you want to turn on the radio, turn on for a little bit, shut it off. I sometimes find that salespeople want to talk a lot during this process, and I try to just, you know, nicely tell them that I'm, I'm focused on what's going on with the car, listen for any noises, are there any vibrations, let go of the steering wheel. As long as you're going straight down the road, that car should track straight. Press on the brakes, press on them a little hard, Make sure that when you step on those brakes and you have your hands off the wheel, that the wheel isn't going to turn left or right because what could happen is, is you could have a brake caliper that's hanging up on the rotor. Remember, the caliper squeezes the rotor to stop the wheel from turning. Um, that could be problems down the road. When you get back to the dealership, get out of the car. Look around the whole car. I mean, really look. There could be imperfections in the paint that the dealer didn't see, um, and if you don't see them, then that's something you're gonna have to deal with later. Any dents, you know, dings. Some of these dealerships I've been to, I can't believe how close they park these cars to one another. I don't even know how it's possible, how they're able to open up a door on either side of the vehicle without making contact with the vehicle next to it. So really look at those things, front bumper. Another question you wanna ask about the car, how long has it been sitting on the dealership lot? They can find that out. That's good information to have because remember, these dealerships have to pay for the car sitting there. The longer it sits, the more they're going to be paying and that's going to obviously work in your favor. Another thing you want to do is you want to um, really ask the, the salesperson, you know, what kind of rebates are going on on the car? Um, hopefully you did the research part of it and you're not concerned about that because you've already done your homework, but if there's any extra information that you could find out from the salesperson about the car, this is all going to play big dividends. Another question you might want to ask, has there been any repairable damage on the car? Believe it or not, depending on the state that you live in, there are different laws. There's different dollar amounts that the dealership must tell you if that car was damaged in a test drive, if that car was damaged on delivery, they must tell you to make the deal legit. So know what that limit is. I would ask, because if you're asking, obviously they need to be giving you an answer in return. So ask to see if there was you know, any receipts for any damage on the car, even if it was under the state limit. And if there were, 
then that might be something that you could either work out on the deal or you, you know, wash your hands of it and you walk away. So as you can see, the meet and greet, the test drive, very, very crucial, not just for driving the car to see if you like it, but you really wanna get some of these details because now we're going into the negotiation round. This is where buying a new car can become not so much fun anymore. Obviously, car dealerships are here to make money. Obviously, a way that they're gonna make money is by either selling you a car for as much as they can or giving you as little as they can for their trade-in. This is where the dance happens. So they're gonna probably come at you with a number. And like I told you before in the last video, in part one, don't negotiate your monthly payment. Negotiate bottom line. So they're gonna come at to you at you know, come at you on the low end, guaranteed first time around. Don't get insulted. You know, sometimes in the past I've been the the price has been so high or uh, what the you know what they want and what they're gonna give me in my trade, it's it's so low, I feel insulted almost. Don't get insulted, it's nothing personal, it's all part of the deal. So you're gonna probably go back and forth. And and if you did your homework, you'd be able to show the salesperson, hey. This is what the car is going for. Um, this is this is the values that I found on my trade. You know that gives you some ammo. If you have nothing, then you are at the mercy of the salesman and the dealership. So once you go back and forth a little bit, if you find like you're getting close, like say they're getting close to that magic number for your new car price and your used car value that you're trading in there's some things that you could work out. Now, one thing I want to remember, remind you is that, remember that if they're giving you a little bit more than what you wanted for your trade, but charging you a little bit more than for the car, it, it washes out. So it's a give and take, and that's why there's an extra benefit of trading in a vehicle. If they can't make it up on the new car price, they can make it up on your trade in value and then you wind up getting the deal in the end that you wanted anyways. Whereas if you didn't have a used car to trade in, they may not be able to work so much on that new car price. Never, ever, ever, ever should you pay MSRP. I paid MSRP on one car and one car only. That was when I bought my 2017 Honda Civic Type R. Normally, I would have felt ill leaving the dealership paying that. Now, the reason why I didn't feel so bad is because a lot of people were paying what's called um, adjustment market uh, markup. So there's a thing called adjustment markup where it's usually abbreviated ADM. And because people want the car, because it's a high demand car and there's not a lot around, they can charge you 5,000, 10,000, 15,000 on top of sticker MSRP. So I got the Type R at MSRP. If you're not buying such a rare car like a Type R or uh, a Ford Raptor or something like that, you know, you really shouldn't be worrying about any type of adjustment, markup adjustment on it. Um, another thing you wanna do is, is you wanna find out, you know, what are some of those other things that you're gonna be uh, paying for? That dealer fee, what other fees are involved? Remember, usually there's the not only do you have sales tax, you have uh, disposal fees, document stamp fees. There's lots of different fees. Find out what those fees are. Now, let's say, like I said, you're getting very, very close. You could squeeze out a few things if you are, you know, careful. One thing to definitely look at: look at this window sticker of that car that you're thinking about buying. If there's any options on there that were maybe options that were dealer add-on, like something like a car cover, um, wheel locks, tell them, listen, I don't need a car cover, for example. I parked the car in the garage. The car covers $375. A lot of times, dealers will actually add that $375 to your trading value and let you keep the car cover. So. The worst that they could say is no. Always ask, because the worst they could always say is no, and you'd be surprised sometimes, especially if it's a car that, you know, they're trying to move off the lot. Another thing, when everything is said and done and you're close to getting that magic number, 
See if you could get window tint, you know, installed for free. That will save you 100, 150, 200 bucks, depending on the vehicle, uh, you going and, and getting it window tinted somewhere else. So there's, there's little things that you could do that maybe you just ask and it might work out your benefit in the long run. Even if maybe you're not getting the most perfect price that you wanted, but if you're getting some free things, maybe you get some free maintenance. Maybe you get an extended warranty for free or the window tint or something like that. It all works to your advantage. But like I said, anytime you feel uncomfortable, anytime you feel like it's not going well, thank them and walk out. Nine out of 10 times, they're probably gonna call you back anyways because they wanna make a sale. They're there to make a sale. It's just, is it the right sale for you? That's the thing you have to, to figure out. If you feel also, let's say you start in the morning and now it's around two o'clock and you're getting hungry. Tell them you wanna take a lunch break to, this, to think it over. Like I said, you'd be amazed that when you get hungry, how much that frontal lobe just shuts down and you stop really thinking clear. You might actually start getting pissed off and angry very easily. So definitely go on the lunch break and, and do that. And maybe when you come back, it'll work out in your favor. In the end, they're gonna come at you with the final, what is that final thing? The thing that you're signing on, that, that, that bill of sale, so to speak. Now that bill of sale is not the actual final documentation because you're gonna have to get approved for financing unless you've already been approved. You went out and found the financing yourself and then they're gonna require you to sign uh, lots of paperwork, um, almost as much as buying a house, um, that involved you know, transfer of title uh, from your old car to the new car and the odometer reading and all that kind of stuff. Um, they're gonna have you sign something in that room with the salesperson saying that this is what you're agreeing to. Look over those numbers. If everything looks good to you and you're happy, go ahead and sign. Now, once you're done with that, I would wait before you go into the finance director's office to sign the rest of the paperwork. Wait until that car is done being detailed and you can look over it one more time. That way you're satisfied because remember, once you go into that finance manager's office or the director of finance for the company and sign all that documentation, that car is yours. So if they roll it up and you see something that you didn't see before, yeah, nine out of 10 times, the dealership's gonna take care of it without a problem. But do you really wanna go through that rigmarole of having to get the door resprayed or something like that? So my advice is look over the car. If everything is fine then, now you're gonna go into that final step, which is the end of sale. That's where you want to have that original document that you signed and compare it to now the longer bill of sale, which has a lot of other things that you're gonna be initialing. Look at all those numbers. Make sure everything adds up right. It's your responsibility. Yes, they need to show it to you and explain it to you. Ask questions. It's okay. I know, especially if you're a guy watching this, we're not supposed to ask questions, right? We hate asking questions. Ask questions because in the end, whatever questions you could get answered now will probably save you time, headache, and everything else after the sale is done and you notice something. Once everything looks good, sign it up and hey, guess what? You just bought yourself a brand new car. I hope that this video, not only part one, but also part two has come in handy. I hope I gave you some tips out there. If you're already an expert and everything that I said is things you already know, that's awesome. But for the other viewers out there, I hope I was able to give you something along the way. I want to once thank you all again for watching. As you can see, Rady's Rides yesterday, we wound up getting a thousand subs. I appreciate that. I am so grateful. I'm going to be putting a little um, thank you vlog together to thank all of you that have been so supportive. You know, I've only been doing this for about three months now, and I can't believe just how well it's taken off and just a lot of the great feedback that I've been getting. And I just appreciate all of you taking time out of your day to spend it watching some of my videos. And hopefully you've had enjoyment from them. Hopefully you've learned some things. And like I always say, if you have something that you wanna see me vlog about, if you have something that 
you would like to see on Randy's rides, or if you yourself have a certain car or truck or whatnot that you would like me to feature on Randy's rides, leave a comment in the comment section. Go to my website, radiesrides.com. I see a lot of you going on and uh, checking out my Instagram and follow me on Instagram at Radies Rides. And like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.